Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Hello everybody. Mathis. Hey folks, Cole Dean here. Hi, I'm John. Hi, Johan. <laughs> and uh, a special guest. Oh, oh God. Don't worry about no. that. He will be remembered. <laughs> He'll be missed. He'll never be forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So we're here to talk about uh, E4 Eldorado. Eldorado Yay. indeed. Well, we've already had a little bit of hands-on time with it, about, what, an hour? About? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I took a little bit of extra time. You took extra time. Yeah. I died about five times. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what do you expect? Aruma's already broken the game. Found yeah. out all yeah. like, the broken, insane combos. I kept hearing the, the, the devs in the background, Aruma, you just broke it. <laughs> yeah. I know. Just broke the game. It took about ten minutes, and I already <laughs> it got, take long. like, the best custom nation. It's yeah, gonna be fantastic. you really did. It's, uh, it's something I'll use during our multiplayer. No, campaign. no. Because <laughs> right. Wiz is already going to fix it. He already told me, oh yeah, that's that's out. Oh, okay. I'm going to change it. What the whole, what did you, what part? Well, I can tell you, because I'm going to, he's not going it, to, it'll still be in the game when it comes out on release, but um, he's going to fix it, like, right away. So Don't count on it. <laughs> <Don't do that. laughs> oh, wow, all right. It'll take him a while. Um, like, so you're able in the in the nation designer, you're able to like choose which which territories you take and how much they cost. Like, like um, choose the national ideas that you pick, and then also whichever provinces that you want. But for some reason, the the cost of taking like the important centers of trade was not really that much measured. Yeah. Okay. So if you take all of the important centers of trade in the English trade node, um, then you can just start off with like Super 30 rich. ducats a month of income, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's pretty good. So that was going to be my I called tactic. It, I called it Trady McTrade, which is going to be the name of the nation. So. Okay. Yeah, I don't and then just stack some trade ideas, but not, uh, yep. not max level them. Yep. Right. You got an extra merchant, you get Merchant Republic, and then you take uh, some other trade ideas and you're good to go. Yeah, I find the uh, the ideas and aspirations are way more expensive than just taking provinces. Like starting off with a, a colonist costs like thirty points, but it's like double that if you take it as an initial idea. Mm -hmm. But um, for that amount of price, you can take like fifteen provinces, mm -hmm. including like gold provinces and things. It's like, well, we'll see what that's like. But you can make mm -hmm. some fun stuff. Like starting off with a colonist right from day one, ah, it's amazing. Right. Oh, okay, so you basically say you pick the. Why These ones here. Don't show them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a <laughs> Oh no. Okay, I'm uh, I'm making my uh, uh, Arumba killing nation. <laughs> yeah. oh, right next door. <laughs> See, this is the problem. I was talking to Johan yesterday. He's like, you know, when you guys play multiplayer, it's different than when we play multiplayer because we're too nice. Like I, okay, in the last campaign we did together, mm -hmm. I like really kind of beat the crap out of Northern Lion. But there wasn't a big <laughs> colonial Spain that was played by a player that would That's come true. in and stomp me, mm -hmm. which is a fair point. Um, which, you know, we, we only play with, like, <laughs> the nation named Killarumba. <laughs> it, make, it, it makes a big difference if you have 30 or more players because yeah. there's a kind of a self-balancing there. You're not just abusing the AI's mm -hmm. propensity to, you know, be a little bit more passive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're making the Killarumba nation. But I didn't I, even mess with the, the, Aru the Arumba creator, the nation creator at all. Um, I really? actually just messed with the Aztecs because the Aztec religion kind of came in. I died five times. Uh, but I found it really interesting just because it has that doom counter, because mm -hmm. they, they believed back then if you didn't sacrifice to the gods, it would be the end of the world. Uh, so the way you kind of take care of the doom counter is you have vassals, and you sacrifice your vassals to the gods to keep that doom counter down. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, and it goes all the way to the top, it, like they were telling us, it's the end of your game, because in a way, because they all your noble line gets right. sacrificed instead. Mm -hmm. um, Unfortunately, I just kept getting crushed by my neighbors before we saw that part, but that's not really that surprising. <laughs> yeah. So I'm guessing thing. you must start over with like zero legitimacy, basically. I would like, assume you must that's have a what new it family, is. A new dynasty with no legitimacy. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounded like it was pretty uh, detrimental if you let the Doom Counter get all the way up. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's that's something exciting, and you can you can find El Dorado and uh, the Fountain of Youth and everything in the game with conquistadors. They were saying, right? Which I didn't really obviously get to experience that much, but. Um, hopefully something that we're going to be doing in our next multiplayer game, which is something that I think we're going to be talking about yeah. in yeah. a minute. Well, I, uh, I did mess around with the uh, nation designer a little bit. I made a fantasy country. I called it Belgium. Okay. And uh, it was yeah. quite exciting. I tried, I tried to make a Western power in Africa, and I tried to see how few points you could get away with. Because you can start with very easy, like 800 nation builder points, which is a lot. Yeah. And then yeah. normal is 400? 200. No, normal. Okay. There's, there's five settings. Oh, okay. There's eight. Very easy, easy, normal. A 200, 200, 150. Yeah, so I first started with 50, and that was a little bit tough because just picking a Western nation in Africa ate up like basically all your points right but, away. But you did, you did uncover the little, little trick you can do, right? Uh, well, there's a couple of them. One, the, the, one of the discussions was start Eastern. That way you don't have to worry about 
everyone yeah. in Africa westernizing instantly. It's like, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right, and it's only like 20% more tech cost, so. Yeah, it's not too bad at all. Being Eastern is not a big detriment, really. Yeah, you get slightly uh, weaker units, or they yeah. peak at different times, but overall, it's still pretty strong. Mm -hmm. and it's cool that you can choose your religion, although as we discovered from the starting bookmark, you can't just start as Protestant or, refer or Reformed, right. which I guess makes sense. In 1444, in you 1444. cannot. 1444. But I imagine, and I actually didn't test this, Johan, can, if you start in a later time, yeah. Like after the Reformation has supposedly or yeah, has officially can, begun. Yeah, you can pick Protestant. Nice, as long as it exists cool. somewhere on the map, presumably. Um, the, but, uh, oh, there was something else I was going to say. I can't well, remember. There was also the other thing we could oh. talk about briefly. Go ahead. No, no, please. I was talking about uh, the whole randomize the whole world aspect that yeah. you can do as well, which mm -hmm. will. I'm assuming you two will use a lot more than I will. Uh, so there's three modes, right? So yeah. there's the. Um, there's the sort of, well, there's the actual historical map mode, no custom nations allowed. Then there's normal, which is the normal map you're used to, but you can create a custom create nation, nation anywhere yeah. you want. And one thing that's notable about something like that is when you pick which provinces are part of your custom nation, if you're just picking, say, like empty space, then you're not really weakening any neighbors. But if you're picking all your provinces from, say, France, then you've got not only do you have a new country, but you have a significantly weaker France in the game, which is a big deal. Right. I'm sure everybody will do at least once. Yeah. And, and the important thing, too, is that when you take land from, say, France, they don't keep their cores. So land that's um, traditionally French that you, like, need to avoid because France will get mad, mm -hmm. um, you can take. Like, you can take Ile de France and, sorry, this is officially mine. It's so never been yours before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now you, you have your trade republic in the English Channel. Mm -hmm. I like to, everyone to me, kill Arambia. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Norse... Step nomad in the heart of France. <laughs> okay. uh, we don't care about things like the sea or so. Um, we s we start with we have the step uh, technology, which means that we're at long term we're kind of like in a bad sit situation. But uh, stack cavalry compatibility and morale at n number one. So, ba so basically, if you have any promises on the mainland, they will not be yours. Well, I don't know, because I had like 30 ducats a month in income and like 40 force limit at the start of the game. I think I could just buy mercenaries. I like sure. how we're sitting here discussing, you know, how the game works he, and he Johan's just, over here. He's got the idea. He's like, I'm going to rush you. I need to kill a room. He just wants to kill me. I mean, it's, I mean that's kind of a running some, theme some people in all the games. see the world burn. Mm -hmm. Like you, right? right? But... I am really excited about the, the nation designer when it comes to multiplayer because of like the replayability. Yeah. Like one of the complaints that I've kind of had, and that's not really even a complaint, is just that if you're gonna play multiplayer, it's like, okay, someone's gonna take France, yeah, someone's gonna take England, yeah. and it's it's always the same. It's right. never different. And now, like when we play together, it we'll be able to like break up those countries apart or like have specific point limitations on each player based on perceived skill. And so that me and Ryan have 800 points and you two have 50. Right, and I think you can just, you don't have to spend all your points, right? You can just that's probably come true. in under the number. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're not above. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing that's important for a multiplayer kind of balance situation is you can, instead of using the normal historical start with all the nations, you can either do a randomized map or a true custom map where it starts completely blank. Other than the countries that you create, mm -hmm. um, there'll be nothing at all. So it really comes down to pure skill. Plus, you can uh, balance the, the tax value of all the provinces, right? Instead of having yeah. some that are worth one and in the France being 17, you can just have everything be like a three or four tax base across the board. Yep, you can do both. You can, you can do three or four every province. Right. And then you can have true random, which you can, you know, there so can be. Know. This is a true random. I picked up a uh, random there you go. space. Oh, let's see what we've got here. Uh, let's, uh, as you see, you can only see a, a range of stuff around us. Let's say uh, we had, I started with the Killer Umbria here. Oh, very and nice. That's, that's good. Very good. I want to play against this. Yeah, I, when I, I'll, you want to play against Killer Umbria? Well, because here's something you can do as well. Like, when you create a custom nation, you don't necessarily have to play that nation. Right. You can do like so you, can, you, you could create my Trading McTrade. And put in also Kill Arumbia and then like see how have an AI play yeah. them in single yeah, player like, or multiplayer. Oh, just, you know what's going to happen? Like they do with France and Castile, they'll just ally and oh, then they'll just true. dominate yeah. the world. So it don't really matter. Aritza, yeah. they're it, so big. I like the Ottomans up in Sweden. In my random game that I set up, I had a, a Canada <laughs> in Finland. Sorry, Arissa's Arissa's like dominating. Huge, and, yeah, Arissa. I mean, you know, whatever. That's how you play Arissa. Uh, apparently, you just got to move your entire country. So who has the highest income in the game? Polotsk, and I know no no where. Oh, Whoa! Wow. <laughs> oh no! And That's what, like what the kind main of government does it have? Two. Like being there, it's probably well, set the eastern, yeah. It's a canal, can it? And it's oh okay, okay. It's it on it. Yeah, okay. Nomad. Okay. Okay, so long term, not 
the big firm, mm -hmm. feudal monarchy, Chinese, animist, they're pretty rich. With, this, with these random nations, do they fit the normal tech groups? Or yeah, is the it normal tech groups are put on their... Based on the region, not yeah, based on the country. Yeah, Killer okay, of course. Right. I'm not anywhere near as rich as uh, the... Killer, yeah. Uh, yep. mm -hmm. but, uh, Although 12 yeah. per month is pretty good. I, I would still win. Yeah. I'm sure you would. 30 <laughs> against 12, that's, like, I, I need, I need that's so many mercenaries. Uh, the Norse mechanic is the same one from the converter. When you get so you have, can pick your own deity if you. Oh okay. Oh, oh wow! Right. That's because awesome. I've never played as Norse religion because Ooh. unless you played with the converter, then yeah, you exist, yeah. Right? But so let it, let's put it this way: I'll be able to have a leadership at day one. <laughs> <laughs> and you can run. Cause it, can you run 100% cavalry uh, as a step? I don't remember. I don't. I'm, I'm, or is I it 80? Don't really, uh, I think you can. I don't think that you have to have any infantry. I think, I, yeah, I think you need to select, I'm, I'm sorry, you need to select an army and then hover over the cavalry. I thought it was shown here. I know what to do. <laughs> I know you can see it from the army, but there's got to be yeah. somewhere else you can actually you see it. Yep, and then you hover over the cavalry, lower down. Yeah, the other one. The next one. In the act below that. There you go, right there. 100%. Yep. Oh, yeah. God. So yeah, and you've got your 20% bonus from your, uh, your tradition, and I then your plus uh, one shock. Yeah, because that's shown here. It's like I get uh, twenty percent there. <coughs> How do I make my blob bigger? That's all I want to know. Okay, can only have twenty six. Yeah. Yes, but a day one in. You Calvary. can't, but you can't afford them. You don't have any money. <laughs> that's when you ally, you trade to trade, and then you just dominate <laughs> the world. So what we're yeah, saying you is, you feed money from in the out one of us trading. will. So Ryan or I will start as Kilarumbia, and then the other one will take trading McTrade. We'll mm -hmm. ally because we always ally because we backstab a room. That's every what time. you do. Yeah, and then wherever you are, somewhere in the world, we'll just find out how to kill you. <sighs> Fine, so, 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 I'm so, moving so. to the new world. Then forget <laughs> it. We're done. <laughs> okay, so uh, you say I can't afford. I currently have twenty k. Okay, they're not. The stream is no, going to be a, a debate over whether we can kill him or not. Nah. All right, let's start up some play right now. All right, let's go play. Yeah. Well, you could afford, what, four cavalry right now, but you can't pay for them. You don't have any money. So what? Uh, you don't make any money. Let's, they, I'm going to rain you back in the room. Say, say point fifty three per month. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm earning 12 per month, mm -hmm. so I can afford 24 cavalry. Um, 23 or 22 is not far. But you got reinforcement costs. And yeah, got, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. So I'm gonna pull you back in here for a second, Ruben. Okay. So what are we thinking with with El Dorado hitting sh shortly soon? Mm -hmm. um, what are we thinking? How how is this going to impact our series? Because we're going to be getting back into it soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we want to talk about. I mean, before we when we finished up, we said let's get together at some point and figure out what we want to do for the next series. Do we want to wait for El Dorado? And because of travel and everything, I got you. <laughs> uh, because of travel and everything. Um, you know, we haven't been able to get together and figure out what we're going to do, and now El Dorado's kind of nipping at our heels. Right. How is this going to affect our series? What are we going to do? Well, we probably all do custom nations. Right. So yeah. then the question is, how many points do we right. use? How do you balance it? Do you have the historical world, the randomized world, an empty right. world? What's best? I think with if we had like 30 people, starting with the empty world and then growing from there, it'd we'd be, be pretty good. Yeah, thank God we don't have 30 people. So. Randomized uh, nations with a flat tax base might be the most balanced thing. Now, is that... An interesting thing, right? Maybe. Then, then every promise is worth the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just love that you don't really know what the other countries are. Right. And it, as yeah. and then you get like the more enclosed uh, Terry Cognita, which means that beyond your knowledge. That's yeah. right. Because uh, normally, if you start saying as a Western nation, you always see all of Europe and well, yeah. quite a bit of stuff. But that won't be the case with the randomized nation. Who knows, man? You could build like the best country in the world and just spawn next to. A better country and we'll crush you right away. We, we like had a, kill we, right. had a, we had a multiplayer campaign on Tuesday where we're, uh, we're stress testing this, and I ended up creating a, a trade slash military power in Gascony. Yeah. Uh, can someone hit the TV downstairs? I got. It. Can I hit OK? Do I just touch it? <laughs> what am I doing? We got okay. No, no, Technical. Awesome. He's got it. What? I actually have a question for um, nation creation in the yeah. multiplayer. Uh, when you're picking your provinces, does that like um, instantly update everywhere else? So, yes. So you can't both take yeah. the same province? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, I was creating my trade, military stuff. I wanted to be organized around the Bordeaux end node because I was thinking long term. Uh, I also had wanted to have a <laughs> A good base tax area. You were doing the same thing I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. You were focused uh, on in game but trade. It was also not that much on trade. It was okay. just a positioning 
there. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a lot of rich promises in the, I don't know what the name of the river that goes out in Bordeaux is called. Mm-hmm. Um, that had a lot of like nine, eight, ten base stacks, a big dam, and lots and lots of coast promises here and here and here, just to, mm-hmm. we all know more coast promises is good. Yeah, yeah, um, that evil force limit. And uh, Karsten, our uh, QA, uh, or no, uh, the EU4 QA expert, long story of titles. Anyway, uh, he, he created a battalia, which was a kind of like what you wanted mm-hmm. to have, which was basically the coastline up here. Okay. Then we ended up with, uh, Gotland, which was an AI country that had basically what is still Arumbia here, the Cossacks, Ser- <laughs> Serbia there, and uh, most of like Germany up to like Ikea. Like, it's just like all of the HRE. Yeah, uh, yeah it was the richest and most powerful country in the world, uh, and it was Scotland. So they had the good niche ideas, which are pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were a little bit worried. We gobbled up the small minor nations nearby us, so, but mm-hmm. since we were two players, we could hold our own and not be crushed. Yeah, no, yeah, but, we crushed. Mm-hmm. But it's it it made like limited our expansion severely. What some people who were playing in like the east could be able to just mm-hmm. uh, wreck. It, it's interesting because you don't really know what will happen. Right. Mm-hmm. I but think that's the whole kind of focus of the expansion is to just mm-hmm. really kind of vary everything up. I mean, kind of throw out what you know if you plan on playing the random thing and just it, a whole new throw you in a whole new challenge that's going to kind of test your skill. And like you said, it's going to be a lot more skill based when it comes to that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you'll be fine. On top of that, you've got the randomized new world too, which I throw that on. That, never that, I didn't I, thought about that. I didn't use it too much just because it's kind of nice. That one time. It's kind of nice knowing where everything is. Yeah, but, that's true. But when you pair that with random nations... There's excitement to be had, I think, with, with a randomized new world, though. Walking into an area, you don't know what to expect. Mm-hmm. I find with the randomized new world, it tends to make a lot more sort of individual islands, at yeah. least in all the games I did. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty significant, because um, with the Americas as is, you just have to sort of get people over there once, and then you can keep wandering around with your troops and reach everything. Mm-hmm. But with the islands, then uh, naval power becomes that much more power and important. Yeah. yeah. Kind of unrelated to the uh, the nation designer. I know we talked a lot about that quite a bit, but I was talking earlier with Wiz, and I'm, but Johan could probably chime in on this. Um, like the way that it's been changed with uh, regard to like liberty desire. Yeah. That's something I'm pretty excited about because it used to be that a nation would want to like get rebelled from their overlord like 1700s, and then all the other nations would just say no. And they just dogpile the <laughs> the guy that wants out and. He's just done. The colonial nations would take care of it for him. Now they're doing something new where they like all rebel together and they all have allies yeah. and they call them all in and like it's, it's like gonna be and not all rebel together, but only the ones that are at least fifty percent liberty desire. Awesome. So and, uh, it's not it's not just colonial nations that have liberty desire. It's uh, vassals, right? Yeah. Vassals are going to use the same liberty desire mm-hmm. mechanic as colonial nations. Well, That's probably best, but how do they increase or get down? <laughs> because you remember in Art of War, there was that one guy who, it wasn't me, but that one guy who uh, waited until he had um, the Imperialism CB, mm-hmm. and then he just went with unlimited vassals because you don't need any Diplo points anymore because right. you can attack for zero dip. Um, so he had every single country in the whole world vassalized. Um, well, apparently now, if you have more more vassals, like your, if their diplomatic technology is higher than your diplomatic technology, it gives them like five liberty desire. So that's broken. Um, you can't do that anymore. Okay. But they will, then they'll all rebel against you. And uh, This is the world I reckon. Yes. Makes sense. Kind of. yeah, I'm, I'm going to start this great birthday and we can look at how the liberty desire mechanic works with uh, different types of... Okay. So what year are you loading up? Uh, 1756 on the year's war. We have... Uh, Subjects here, we have the 30 colonies. Mm-hmm. With 100% desire. Yeah, they want to become free. They will eventually declare war. They are big enough to give us a merchant, so it's Newfoundland and British West Indies. And Newfoundland, they're not that high on liberty desire, but they're still. They're over 50. Yeah. Yeah, and relative power versus leech. They are, the 30 colonies, they're rather powerful compared to Great Britain proper. And you have Hanover, which are uh, not that keen on being breaking free. They look pretty content. Yeah, then you have the Carnatic Protectorate. Now, is, is Liberty Desire going to increase more than before? Because I found it very easy to keep everyone below 50%. But it's not a value that ticks up or down. It goes on stuff. You have like your war exhaustion. Mm. If they power, it's like if you're playing a small Portugal, Brazil will break free. Okay, right. because of relative size? Relative size. 
And then it's a relative size of uh, like all your vessels compared to you a little bit. Uh, so the more vessels you have, the higher it goes up. Yeah, it's not right. that big as their own stuff. Then you have stuff like the opinion of, of the leech, if they trust you or not, your reputation. If you squeeze them dry with high tariffs, as we're doing here, mm -hmm. uh, they seem to want to have representation. Won't we don't mm -hmm. really want to give them that. That kind of reminds me a lot of the faction system in CK2. Yeah. The power right. relative to liege. Yeah, that's good. Yes, yeah, like we learned a lot, a lot between the various <laughs> the, the, yeah. the two teams we say, we got say, together <laughs> and had a conversation. You, you see our office. We used to be in the, like the same room, all the dev mm -hmm. teams, and now we don't fit in the same room anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so even if I create like a, a trade company, it's like I think pretty much start with promises. Yeah. So all vassals will have this liberty desire, but I think I heard that um, what what are they called? The ones that you create yourself. The client states. Client states are very loyal. Is that right? Yes. So they won't do that. No, no. Uh, client states. It's very unlikely for for mm. you to get them to break free. Is it the same with marches? Uh, marches are less likely than vessels, but there's still a chance. Yeah. Okay. But if they like if they attack you, do they lose march status? Because they're technically independent. Uh, God, I do not know. Ha! -ha. Yeah. <laughs> Stumped me, but I did it. I, I, took, I, it took him on. I know that when uh, <laughs> at least they should be marches until it's either after the first month after starting the war or, or until peace. Because right. they have a lot of force limit and they get a lot of def uh, fort defensiveness yeah. um, for being a march. Yeah. Do, do you guys, how do you use Soviets? Do you use some vassals or marches or vassal feed or how do you treat Me? Them? Mostly I do vassals and vassal feeding. Um, yeah. I did recently in um, my Polish campaign Create eau de toilette um, in uh, France. Of course, you did. Yeah, <laughs> of course, you yeah, did. yeah, yeah. Because you know, it was the French, Jesus. and uh, so uh, I created that client state. But what state. was really great about it was that because you were able to impose your dynasty yeah. on a client state, I actually inherited them like five years later. So I got all this land free of free, no money yeah, points. And, and, and normally, when you create a, a vassal, yeah. they're not your dynasty. So it takes a long time to even have a chance to to get them your dynasty, and then even then, it's still an inheritance chance type yeah. thing. But it was pretty cool that it was possible that quickly. Well, how was their autonomy when you inherited them? Like when you inherit a country, it, it's whatever it is. Yeah, there's so no it, increase. It didn't go up at all, just like so, anything of assets. So their capital was automatically at zero percent, and then they had cored everything, and they got it really low, and then I inherited it and just got all this land for free. It's pretty cool. And for me, but I think the inheritance is so luck based. Yeah. So you can't really count on it. Why, uh, why, why do you have fourteen leaders? It's the historical setup. That's too like many. It, 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 no, it, it works for them in the history. It, it used to be that three. then. It's like, right. uh, yeah. we don't really go through every a bookmark and adapt to mm -hmm. when rules changes because 99.99% .99 of all games started is mm -hmm. day, day one. Well, mm -hmm. this is proof that the AI cheats. They get 14 leaders. Yeah. It's not fair. No, nah, the AI doesn't cheat on that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they have like no military power anymore. <laughs> yeah. so, like, they mean zero per month. Uh, or a negative, almost. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah, marches. Um, I tried. I had a game where I played a campaign as an Ottoman <laughs> to get, you know, the fun achievements, mm -hmm. the Sultans of Rome or whatever it's called. Um, I relied on having two neighbors as marches. I, I had Syria and Serbia as marches because mm -hmm. they had cool military ideas. Mm -hmm. And then just other countries were temporary vessel fed, and then. I tend to be super greedy, and I often end up being way above my like diplomatic relationship yeah. limit of vassals, and it quickly becomes impossible for me to ever be able to annex them all just because of the relationship yeah. penalties. So usually I will end up picking a couple that I will just never be able to finish annexing, was, and then I'll dude, march them. That was your problem in the multiplayer campaign. I remember yeah. looking at you uh, and in failing. Game well, you know, your country's not that big, and then you'll and then I was like, wait, no, that that's a vassal, that's a vassal. <laughs> That you have a vassal all the way through Ming. Uh, I don't endorse it as like the ideal way to play. I just go whenever you go to war. It was just like, yeah. oh, he's going to war. He's going to have a hard time. And then all yeah, the countries gonna, rise you're up. You're going to be behind, so much behind in diplomatic. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, and, and min points too because of all the coring I end up doing. Which, so I'm like a hundred years behind on both technologies. In the past, being behind on diplomatic tech didn't really matter. But it sounds like with this new liberty desire mechanic, it's going to be a big yeah, deal. Yeah, and that's and that's an excellent point. And I like it as a balancing thing. Yeah. 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 But uh, when our, we play our competitive multiplayer game, it's like countries that are not on par in administrative and diplomatic, they give up 20% efficiency. 
Yeah. yeah. That's a significant yeah, if you're out ahead income. of time, yeah. And that's a significant income because money is what decides if you win or lose wars. Like, oh, wait, 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 wait. So you want to go wait, say it one more time? <laughs> yeah, that's what you're saying. <laughs> money, just say like, money <laughs> is what decides who wins wars. So yeah. my trading McTrade. Yeah, but you couldn't protect me. No, no. I won. I won the war. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know why I why well, like have wins. countries that are like big blobs, like <laughs> because I like to have depth. Because there will always be uh, that asshole that declares war on you, and, uh, and if you only have one or two problems in depth in the coast or important stuff, mm -hmm. they will just blitz and take your stuff before you can. Mm -hmm. There are no places to recruit the. Uh, a reserve okay. army mm -hmm. if you get knocked out because for some weird reason some people are opportunistic bastards yeah weird me, me, yeah. me yeah. included but you know that's strange you know what that makes me think of um you're talking about depth like, yeah do you use scorched earth in multiplayer do you guys use that feature some people do it sometimes um the it thing does. is i don't scorched think it's earth. super economy all, all, that's all super ryan did was like you're gonna take my land scorched earth ryan has a spite based play style yes is really what it comes down it to. is yeah. it's true yeah. Yeah, you, do you guys remember the first E4 uh, press multiplayer event that you and Ryan yeah. were at? Have you guys heard about what... Uh, he told me about it, but it was a while ago. I got my ass kicked by you. You were no, the Uzbek, and I no, was uh, Muscovy. I, I, me and Ryan were allied. He was Mamluks, and I was Uzbek. Yes. And you were the Muscovy, and you were allied with Rob Sackney. He was Ottomans and some others. The Ottomans, and uh, I think Poland. And, oh, um... Troy as well, who is, I don't know, maybe the Knights or something like that. Not the Knights. Uh, no, it's something more part of Hungary, maybe. Uh, Stronic yeah. Order. I, f yeah. I felt like he was, I don't yeah. know, somewhere in the north, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and it's like the war, it's, the war ended up with basically the Mameluk and Uzbek's armies together sacking Constantinople and Muscovy it, after 150 years. Yeah. <laughs> it was Perfect. bad. That, that, sounds but, good to me. Uh, after all those things, we kept nerfing wars. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it didn't help that I didn't know all the mechanics. I didn't realize the fact that at the time, like, because I'd never played this game before, yeah. and I kept going to attack you in, you know, your territory as a step nomad, which turns out to be a really, really in, bad in idea. In the plains, yeah. Yeah. with infantry. Yeah, and, and you're coming at me with like massive stacks of cavalry. And like, why do I keep losing? This was pre-nerf, pre-release when cavalry was. So bad. Super powerful. E3, the E three level powerful. I still have wow. E three. So. I still have the uh, the pre release like re review press uh, yeah. version in my Steam. I want to make like a let's play in that <laughs> old old version really soon, it's, just to show people the oh, changes that have happened. It's so much. I don't serious. know. Would you be able to play without the army designer at this point? I'd, I'd go that far back. back. Yeah. Mm. I still really don't use Not the army game. designer. Mm -hmm. That's how bad I am. Army designer is fantastic. It's, it's nice so. when you've got a big country and a lot of money. And you mm -hmm. just hit a button, like, I've got 50 That never troops. happens to me. No? Be yeah. a big country with a lot of money? No. <laughs> you, Not my play style. <laughs> Best tactic is when you lose, just migrate to a more powerful country. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, just just reload as a right. different country. Just exactly. straight up change countries. How do you handle uh, different templates? Um, I usually create one uh, spur of the moment, whenever I want to make a new army specifically. Um, or I'll have like exactly long... Exactly the number of units for your force limit. Right, yeah. right. Okay. That's, yeah, or I'll have like the long term, like, here's a 20 stack template. This is what yeah. I want to build every time I've got an available 24 summit. Yeah, okay. I'll do it like a 10 to 8, and then I'll often have another one that's just like 10 infantry to replenish if I do like a consolidate in the war. Right. I just click build all mercenaries and I hope I win. Yeah, I like what, what I tend to, tend to do is like, I look at my current combat width and I like update it every 30 years and do the combat width infantry plus 4 cavalry mm -hmm. plus uh, 80% of combat with in artillery, mm -hmm. and that I create, I call that battle template, and you're just rebuilding new armies. You build that everywhere? So yeah. we heard it straight from the guy. This yeah. is this is how you win wars, no, with this no, composition. No, you well, tried to sell me on, a, you know, min-maxing based on combat with before. Yeah. yeah. So well, you win wars by building that composition and having the most money. Yeah. Yes. So you can pay but them. I'm, I'm not the... Also uh, manpower. Uh, manpower. Uh, manpower. Technology. Yeah. I've learned, I learned my lesson in the last... The military office. ideas. Yep. Who is? Uh, we used to give our trophies. I don't know if you saw the streams uh, that Matt's been doing every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But fr three times we've have, we've have been thirty players on average. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three people that have two people that have free trophies, and there's the other trophies I, sh I shared on two people. Mm -hmm. And I've ended up fifth, 
sixth and fourth. So I'm not I'm a fairly good multiplayer player, but I'm nowhere near the best ones. <laughs> That's like uh, you met Martin Wiss or yeah. Rudy Clay. Yeah. He has a number one and a number one and a number two position because he, okay. he's the AI programmer. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and he's also really good at talking to people. So those two combination of knowing the mechanics, being able to forge alliances is what makes you good in multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Then you have other guys like I mentioned Kirsten earlier, who's uh, really, he's a QA, he's been working on a game for three or four years, so obviously knows yeah. stuff. But yeah. he's also very, very, it's the other thing is that he's not evil. He doesn't <laughs> jump people and he keeps his word. So you like him? No, no, people, people tend to this do treaties with him. Uh -huh. He will attack you if you are have betrayed his trust or if his alliance will mm -hmm. dictates it, but he's not the one that backs them. So people will <laughs> give him deals. Yeah. I see. And then I'm like Karuba. And then there's the <laughs> real I say, dude, I'm, a Aruba, a reason, like, I'm very trustworthy. There's a reason you get backstabbed a lot. Or no, not backstabbed, people fight against you a lot, because you backstab a lot. I do not. That's not you even close backstab. to true. No, it's no, not. It, you do. The, the, there's, it's not the I'll backstab you. if you attack someone that's clearly in a Weakened position. <laughs> I'm mostly stab right there. That's an <laughs> attack of opportunity. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like I, I was, I'm always perfectly honest. If you're not, if you're a neighbor to me, and if you're far weaker, you will be attacked, unless mm -hmm. you have allies and the, the circumstances dictate. Mm -hmm. It's that, like mm -hmm. if it, every country has an army. That was my saving grace as Venice. Is that I just I clung to France for as long as possible. Yep. That's until true. you, yep. until and you and France, finally dismantled. And France got that BS mission to take over Savoy, which made them hate me. And they got allied Castile in Spain uh, yeah. and eventually, and then it was just impossible for you guys. It took forever. Like it was the end of the series before you were able to like attack France. Mm -hmm. And it, it took me like telling you where their armies were while I was allied. That's true. We had a spy. Yeah. 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 I was yeah. like, all right, I'll work yeah. with you as long as you leave me alone. Right. You know what we should do is we should we should totally hack into Paradox's multiplayer uh -huh. and just don't let them know. But we'll just take over four of the countries yeah. and we'll play with you. I want to see. I'd, I'd love to see you play with Wiz if he's that good. Well, that I'm, like, we're doing a stream yeah. tomorrow. Uh, Wiz and I will be doing a stream again on El Dorado, so mm -hmm. maybe we'll go. set something up. We'll see. Much more intelligent. Definitely want to see that. But the interesting thing is, like, as you all know, when we play play multiplayer and single player is. It's, it's a different, different world. Oh, it's a different world. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. actually do okay in single player, yeah. not yeah. in multiplayer. Uh, the single player is mostly about understanding the rules by which the AI operates, both yeah. in terms of peace and also in war. Like yeah. winning a battle against the AI is about knowing how it's going to move, how to bait them into doing something. Yeah. And human beings are not going to do that. And with human beings, the diplomatic aspect is completely different. You've it's, got to play yeah. that meta game where you're actually talking to Which people is great. and convince them. And the other thing too right. is in single player, you can pause whenever you need to think about it. Yes. When in multiplayer, if you're getting attacked, you have to you have to think now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. like now, we, we constantly play at speed three. Oh, we wow. play speed two. That would be tough. Yeah, yeah. speed two, speed I, three. But you I, have like forty people on land. Yeah, that's another constraint. There's yeah, the because, internet connection speed. Yeah, yeah I, I, I wouldn't dare playing above speed two on the internet. Right. Considering we have lots of stuff mechanics. In, in the game that detects if someone's too s computer's too slow because that will drag them down and make them mm -hmm. go out of mm -hmm. sync. Yeah, and if they're and you can see how the latency and stuff is. But we've been lucky enough. We we've, we've been able to bump it to speed three during the slow periods and have very little problems it, when everyone's at peace. I was say when everyone's yeah. not warring. The minute war starts at speed two, obviously. It, it's always best to have the guy with the worst PC uh, being the host. Yeah, right. Because uh, then. Uh, then the speed will be dictated by that one, and he will not be. He will be able to keep up with the speed. Right. right. But then again, you see, you can see in like in the tool pips uh, at the top of the date when you play the in a multiplayer game, you see what the date everyone is at. Yeah. And yeah. there's also indicators if uh, if you're playing single player. Uh, let's see if we can see that. The green is not fast enough, but that needs to take up a few days. Yeah, there, if there's, there will be an, in the tooltip up there, you'll see like, if we're not fast enough to you'll run say. at this speed, it will say that. Right. So, right. Uh, because at speed one, two, and three, and four, they are like timed to be per seconds and so on. And five is just as fast as the computer can handle it? Yeah. Right. So sometimes it, it gives false positive when it's blinking like that, but that's not something to think about that much, but it wins some liberty, most worse. Very good. 
So do you guys take advantage of some of the other mechanics that you really can't use in single player, like loans, or um, I'm trying to think of anything else that Why comes to mind? can't use loans in single player? The, the AI will never I mean, use... Loans between... They numbers. will never accept a loan. Oh, oh you mean like yeah, yeah. giving money to right, between like, the two? That's something that like I thought was a really fun part of the game, but yeah. it kind of got removed from single player. It was too exploitable. Yeah, yeah. That's what, <laughs> I did. That's what I, did. What I, did. I was gonna say. Yeah. The, wow, the room is upset about an exploit being removed. <laughs> well, it's like one of those things that, like, that I would I would have personally preferred that uh, an alternative solution be found versus just removing it. Um, kind of like Imperial Authority, um, like not being able to use the. Um, You're not allowed to play with the toys anymore. Room to stop. I know it's not fair. Um, yeah. As much as you call the computers cheating bastards, you sir, mm. break the game. Well, they don't really cheat. I know. I mean, they, they really do. don't, but at the same time, they are very exploitable. I think the only thing that the AI truly sort of cheats in EU4 is that they do know where your units are, although they sort of pretend like they don't, and their ships can go anywhere in the world without being attrition, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, Wisk keeps a updated thread or post which cheats the AI is using. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's not that many. Uh, God mode? Yeah. God mode? They have that one on. All the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> it's not active right they now. They always roll nines. Yeah. France always comes in with 666 six, six generals. You know, I that know was this. the best part about the war, of watching you guys fight France and their 666 six, six generals. France, god damn. I know. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you guys want to attack me? France is going to take care of you. That and another great tactic I developed while we played multiplayer is spawn rebels and let them go into your country. <laughs> That's true. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing. It's like, I don't need to form an army if my mm -hmm. rebels are just like, yeah, I'll just cross the border and attack you. That was, that was, was my favorite that part. Was too, that was too Ryan high, got right? so yeah. mad. He's like, oh, stop fighting. I'll deal with your rebels. Whatever. I'm like, thanks, Ryan. You're my friend. Giant stacks of rebels crossing into <laughs> Northern Lions territory. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> so, Johan, which, which part to El Dorado are you the most excited about as a developer? Uh, as a developer or as a, a gamer? Both. Kind of, kind of both. Give us like, both. Because like, I know what I'm excited about, but I kind of want to see I, what you me as a... As a developer, it was kind of fun to have like all these new religious mechanics mm -hmm. because I love having uh, uh, diversifying the experience of the game. Um, Didn't you also add in a whole huge number of available cultures to choose from now? No, it's the same moment of culture. We haven't changed cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, just going to give you an important flag that we added for. God, we need to have this interface better. I hate this fucking shit. <laughs> I just make the solid color flag. You heard it here. Uh. He hates that clicking shit. I make like, the color of my country is blue, my flag is just solid blue. Done. I think it, you can shift click. To yeah, go to move 10 at a time. But it occurred to me a fun thing would do would be to make a really overpowered country with like the full 800 points somewhere in Europe, but then like pick the Aztec religion. Yeah. So obviously, or, the Catholics would hate you, but then you get to sacrifice everyone all the time. Right. I'm, I'm this would be a, maybe a fun challenge you could do is you could you could put it on easy mode, right? Mm -hmm. So you have eight hundred points to spend, right. and then create like five super nations, and then and yourself. then you yeah. play another nation with two hundred points. Mm -hmm. Now you've got these big. Well, it's kind of like playing against France, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Trick question. What shield have I created? Which with the frogs? Is I, that what that is? I don't know. No clue. Uh, this is the official coat of arms of uh, Lucifer or Satan. Well, uh, it, it, it's actually described in a so a room 13, new flag. 13th century um, uh, description of coats of arms, and it's basically it's uh, uh, something with a golden bastard bar over no, the bar, golden bar over red, and then three frogs proper in green. Over it. it's, there you go. It's actually in, from a coat of arms description in, <laughs> in so the early medieval area. It is 666. Six, six. Oh, I like yeah. it. That's so, awesome. Oh, all of it. It's 666 six, six on the first three numbers. Yeah, that's awesome. Was that planned? It must have been. I yeah, hope we, so. we decided. Okay. I'll remember I, that I for you, it, Because I was reading all this like, okay, which symbol should we have? What <laughs> stuff is like? Except, okay, well, what's like a weird coat of arms that we need mm -hmm. to support? I'm like, okay. So if you use this coat of arms, does it like enable a hack of some no, sort? No, nothing. Bonus, bonus shock value. It nothing. should just be that should not be. It's it, it just one of those little fun. Well, it should only be available mm -hmm. on a Roomba's build. Right. <laughs> we'll use that one for the trade there trade game. There you go. <laughs> All right, guys, you have uh, about uh, two minutes remaining. Oh yeah, so let's wrap it up then. Yeah. Oh, I thought we just started. I know. Yeah, that's yeah. weird. So, so how about a Roomba takes setting up a multiplayer for 
the future. We should we should try that. I really think we should. I would cool. be happy to. I just need to be protected. <laughs> well, Johan would protect you with his step nomad uh, unless I'm cavalry. Because then he'll just. I'll protect you by. Calling or if you neighbor him, integrating you within me, and then we'll be all right. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking forward to sitting down again with Ryan proper and figuring out what the next big session we're going to do. Bitty I thought he session. died. Isn't that what this is about? I thought he passed away. I don't know. I think he just got canceled. Oh. Well, right, spread those rumors now. The internet's going to believe. <laughs> you careful what you say online. Right. It's true. Yeah. But no, I'm looking forward to getting sitting down. It's been a while since I've actually had time to play a lot of EU4 and like U2. But uh, I'm looking forward to getting together again and making some nations and you putting you guys on 50 points and taking 800 points and still losing somehow. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know, John, Johan. Have we actually? Is there is there been an official announcement on El Dorado dates? Is that something uh, we can talk about? Sixth of February, I think we said. So yeah. that's like not even two weeks away, right? Yeah, yeah. we're and seeing it, soon. Yay. Yeah, and I think it's uh, forty ninety nine. I think it's like two Wednesdays from now, isn't it? It's yeah, a, uh, no, it's a Thursday release. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So. Well, we'll be we'll be all over El Dorado day one. So. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Assuming everything works out with no bugs. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks and for talking if, to us. If anyone has any suggestions about uh, what kind of nations we should play, where should we play, anything like that, definitely uh, tweet us or, you know. If anyone just wants to play for me and I can just commentate over it, that works too. At least we have uh, we found our own best flag. Yes, right. we yeah. I'm, saying, I'm so yeah, happy I'll, about that. I'll use that flag, sure. I get, please do, please do. <laughs> can you make, like, the rebel flag? Because uh, that would be pretty funny. Yeah. That would be great. Can you do one without emblems? Let's see. Yeah, if you go down to one, it's blank. I just yeah. didn't know if the color, like, if it all worked out okay. I don't know. Because it's what, like, them. black background? Is there a stripe? I, what is yeah, the there it is. Like? There you go. Oh, oh. this is a, well, it's it's be green, but... Eh, close enough. <laughs> you could confuse awesome. your enemies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's, not, a, that's not my enemy. That's just some rebels. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> awesome. Confusion well, to our enemies. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> you lose your mic? Yeah. It's yeah. all gone. So are we going to wrap it up, then? I think we are. Excellent. Thanks for coming and chatting with us, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, Johan, for coming by. Arumba, whatever, man. Quill, thank you. <laughs> whatever. Screw you. I don't like you anymore. And Ryan, it's always good to have you, baby. Aww. See you next time, folks. All right. See you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. We're going to go live with our next segment in about, well, about a few minutes from now. We're going to be sitting down with uh, our good friend Angry Joe and uh, see what he has to say here about uh, well, some stuff that we've done in the past and maybe doing in the future together with, uh, our, uh, with our esteemed Fred Wester. We'll be right back with you. Don't go anywhere. Don't touch that guy.